The psyche is not unconscious. We are, we patients, we analysts. The psyche is constantly making intelligible statements. It's making dreams and symptoms. It's making fantasies and moods. It's extraordinarily intentional, purposive. But the system of therapy has projected the unconscious into the patient's psyche, calling what the, what the psyche is doing the unconscious. Whereas what's unconscious is that you can't understand what the psyche is doing. You're unconscious. For instance, a black snake comes in a dream, a great big black snake. And you can spend a whole hour with this black snake talking about the devouring mother, talking about the anxiety, talking about the repressed sexuality, talking about the natural mind, all these interpretive moves that people make and what is left, what is vitally important, is what that snake is doing, this crawling, huge black snake that's walking into your life. Now that's an absolutely basic, important uh, distinction between interpretation and imagination. And the moment you've defined the snake, interpreted it, you've lost the snake, you've stopped it, and then the person leaves the hour with a concept about my repressed sexuality or my cold black passions or my mother or whatever it is, and you've lost the snake. The tasks of analysis is to keep the snake there, the black snake, and there are various ways for keeping the black snake. You see, the black snake is no longer necessary the moment it's been interpreted. And you don't need your dreams anymore because they've been interpreted. So you can also imagine that interpretation, redu reductive, clarifying interpretations are a way of getting rid of imagination. And that's one of my complaints about therapy. I'm not saying that's what it does and has to do and only does, but that's one of the possible complaints about therapy that it can get rid of imagination rather than promote imagination. But I think you need them, the dreams, all the time. You need that very image you had during the night. The feeling that you need your dream isn't something that we live with usually. We try to fit the dream into the day world, although it comes from another place. See, at night you are in your dream walking around in it and you feel yourself to be enclosed in this scene which is the dream and the moment you wake up in the morning you say I had a dream and you think the dream is in you but at night you're in the dream the dream has you you need that very image you had during the night for example a policeman chasing you down the street you need that image because that image keeps you in an imaginative possibility if you say, oh, my guilt complex is loose again and is chasing me down the street, it's a different feeling because you've taken up the unknown poli policeman into your ego system of what you know, your guilt. You already know you're guilty. And so you just put the label of guilt on the policeman chasing you down the street and then you're, you're comfortable again. I mean, you still may feel guilty, but you're comfortable. The dream isn't doing anything upsetting to you. It's a different feeling because you've Oh, you've absorbed the unknown into the known or made the unconscious conscious and nothing, absolutely nothing has happened, nothing. You're really safe from that policeman and you can go to sleep again. I want to let the psyche threaten the hell out of you by keeping that policeman there chasing you down the street even now as we talk. The policeman is more important than what we say about him. Now that is so hard for us, that is so hard to realize that a phenomenon is always more interesting than the explanation of the phenomenon. The only thing interesting about an explanation is if you take that too as a phenomenon. And then you can look at that again and that's an interesting thing. But, but, if, but what we do with our explanations is somehow think they're more interesting or they're telling us more. And they do. They do tell the usual ego more because the usual ego is an addict of, of explanations.